Alright, my name is Sam. Come on, let's go around the MLS show. Sam on Africa Sports Network with eight done and dusted, and the dust and settled yet. Look at how it ran go galore in the week eight there at City Park as the FC Cincinnati were hammered 5 1 by St. Louis City. Even at Providence Park, the fourth time Seattle Sanders stumbled on their rivals in the Casket Cup. I mean, that defeat left um, the coach of um, Seattle Sanders fuming, you know, on the display or the attitude of his players, you know, on that uh, 4 1 defeat. And also looking at an LAFC, still the only undefeated team after week eight in the MLS as they beat City Rivals LA Galaxy 3-2 in a traffical Houston Dynamo got their first road point of the season with a 1-1 draw at the Red Bulls of New York while FC Dallas claimed a 2-1 home win over Real Salt Lake. These are many more will come your way on today's edition of Around the MLS Show with Sam here on Africa Sports Network and also don't forget I will dub into social media where I will look at the reactions of Houston Dynamo fans toward the situation of DP striker Sebastian Ferrari as the eighth week and he is yet to make another start on that Ben Olsen. So and also I will play a clip of a video of Ben Olsen who you know kind of visibly irritated and angry on um, being asked repeatedly the situation of Sebastian Ferrari. My name is Sam and fasten your seatbelt. Come on, let's go on this journey ride around the world of the Major League Soccer on Around the MLS with Sam here on Africa Sports. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Around the MLS Show with Sam right here on Africa Sports Network. Like I told you, fasten your seatbelt. Let's go. Let's go straight to Providence Park. Uh, I told you, regardless of the fall of Portland Timbers, whenever Seattle come to town, Portland Timbers will only come alive. And they came alive. Darion and Spreader with a beautiful world class bicycle kick goal. Look at that goal. Look at that goal. Just look at the way. The execution alone so sumptuous and Darren Asprilia got um, Portland Timbers back after Seattle took the lead in that game with that um, goal that will be in contention for the goal of the season. Definitely yes goal of week 8. I will pick that as goal of week 8. Beside the brilliance of Darion Asprilia, players like Nathan Fogosia, 76 minutes strike, and also Mascara, 89 minutes strike, undone the defense line of Seattle Sanders. And for you to lose a game that you dominated in certain department of the game, that is so much, you know, painful to bear. And that was exhibited in the coach of Seattle Sanders expressing his displeasure to his team performance. All right, all still on around the MLS show with Sam here on Africa Sports Network. Three Texas teams were in action in this week eight. Houston Dynamo on the road against Red Bulls of New York. The FC Dallas at home against Real Salt Lake. And Austin Football Club are the key to to Vancouver Whitecaps. Yes, three of them avoided defeat in week eight. FC Dallas got a 2 1 home win over Real Salt Lake. Houston Dynamo got their first point on the road with a 1 1 draw at the Red Bulls Arena, while Austin FC got a goalless draw at home against Vancouver Whitecaps. And Houston Dynamo, you know, yes, their first point on the road, and that will spoil them all. Like I said, they are still a work in progress and they are gradually finding they are reading when you look at their home performance three games nine points no goal conceded and what a great performance that was coco put the team in the lead and dynamo also capitulated diamond considering that goal and that goal kind of infuriated the coach but i was saying and during the uh, uh, um post-match conference one of the callers victor of texas you know strikers texas.com asked him about the situation of um, DP striker Sebastian Ferrari and he seemed visibly 
angry or irritated or let's say displeased with you know that person because he felt that they asked him such questions week in week out and that now bring me to let's talk about Sebastian Ferrari's case for a minute for a minute let's talk about Sebastian Ferrari's case for a minute uh, um, he arrived in 2022 um, under a DP contract a huge money back you know Houston Dynamo fans we are all you know happy we are all ecstatic about that um, transfer and um, he scored 14 goals in 31 appearances for Houston Dynamo under Polo Nakamura not a bad start for a player coming into a new league a new team under a new coach yes and boom Nakamura was fired after you know poor performances and Ben Olsen arrived eight games into the season just one start against them FC Sensei and they lost that game at the TQL since then he had made five appearances all from the bench with no goal and Ben Olsen has preferred to start a winger Corey Bell ahead of a DP striker and this now leaves Houston Dynamo fans asking a lot of questions even in the game against LA Galaxy he never came on the pitch even in the game against Red Bulls he never made an appearance and when your coach prefers a winger to a natural striker a DP striker to start a game that means there is a problem and, and, and it looks as if that he is not going to fathom into Benozzi's long-term you know plan I figured out so because when a player has been left consistently on the bench without no explanation and when, when people ask questions and you know answers a little bit invasive or hazy and stuff like that that means that the future of that player is not even guaranteed in the club But Nelson was asked um, by Victor um, of Strikers Texas um, during the post-match conference after their 1-1 draw against Red Bulls of New York regarding the situation of um, Sebastian Ferrari and this was his response. Um, and just, you know, the team continues to to struggle a bit in attack and he's seen dimension playing time. That's the same question you give me every, every weekend. Um, I've answered it. I don't. I don't know how many times, Victor. Um, I thought Thor, to counter your question, I, I thought Thor did a great job. He came into the game and and uh, uh, did a, did a really good job. I'm not comparing the two, but uh, I've answered that question many a times. Yes, um, his um, response. I understand that there are a lot of players who have been pulling their weight. Thor has been phenomenal for the team. Thor is a natural striker, you know, number nine, natural number nine. But he answered it, showed his displeasure towards um, the question, and he had been asked such a question week in, week out. But the Sebastian Ferrari case is a little bit intriguing and annoying in a, in a kind of way, and supporters are asking questions. So I now decided to delve into their social media. Let me see what they are talking about as regards Sebastian Ferrari's case here in Houston. And this is what social media street is saying. And Battalion Houston is a Dynamo supporters fan group. And they said, if roles were reversed and service had started slash played all the minutes Corey Baird has and had the same production, we'll be asking why he's still getting stats like so many minutes. No one is calling for anyone's head. We are just wanting to be we are just wanting a bit more transparency and accountability yes i agree i agree because when you know fans start to ask questions and no concrete answer is coming from the source of where they should expect answers then they take to social media now this is a response from jesus carizales servers would have scored by now it is so blatantly obvious Bed is not a central striker. He's a winger. Dude doesn't know how to move in the box, how to set up CBS. He can barely fight them off. Thor is stronger this season, does that better. But so I want to see him start next. Yeah, Thor is a natural number nine, strong young player, still um, very, very active. You know, Thor is a natural player. I think Thor would develop to be a great striker here in the Major League Soccer. He is still developing, he's still a work in progress. 
still not the finished product yet. Got great talent, you know, he can position, he can shoot good in the air and stuff like that, you know. All right, I was still on the social media street, you know, looking at the reactions of using Danmo fans towards um, Sebastian Ferrari's situation here after that response from Benosin when Victor asked him regarding the situation of um, Sebastian Ferrari. This is also coming from El Batalion. It says, personally, I agree. I think Sebas would find the back of the net by now. That was speculative, which I agree, it's very speculative. The big what if, you know, the big if he had started, he could have scored, yes, possible, yes, he could have also gone, you know, goal, something like that. What I'm saying is that asking Ben this question, given the numbers on the board, is not unfair or unreasonable to him. His system or bad legit concerns coming from fans slash media, which I agree, you know, but I mean, he answered to the best of his knowledge and his ability to being asked such a question week in, week out. Another guy, Edwin Castro, says exactly, well said, guys. People are try also trying to make an excuse about him being a DB. Doesn't warrant him a sport. But with that logic, what guarantees bad his sport? Ben's approach is not approachable, it seems, and can cause a disconnect with the fans, which we so desperately need. Yes, yeah, the fans really want answers, and they want to know why starting a winger ahead of a striker. But my, my, my take is this. If the team is winning, getting points, you know, developing, getting to their rhythm, finding, finding their, their, their form, gradually and grown into the season as they win matches you know who cares who start who even give a who cares who start i mean it's not about the team to me it's not about an individual player i understand there are, might be sentiment from some quarters regarding of um, his huge money buy dp contract is the elite you know tier of the mls contract and so they believe that when you're a dp that does not guarantee you a sport in the team if you are not performing according to the system the coach is trying to implement. It's as simple as that. So I don't really care who starts. All people care is, is the team progressing? Are they getting points? Are they improving? Yes, three games at home, no goal considered yet, nine points. I think they should be six or seven in the Western Conference. 10 points from seven games so who cares who start if it doesn't fit into the coach plan then there should be the easy door to make space for another dp striker to take up that sport that will produce for the team so it's all about the team team making effort team you know improving that's all that matters so this around the mls show with sam here on africa sports network and keep listening and follow me on all my social media plus i'll be right back <laughs> Welcome back to the program. This is still around the MLS show with Sam right here on Africa Sports Network. Yes, let's go to Sporting Kansas. What is happening at Sporting Kansas? I'm trying to understand what is happening at Sporting KC. They can't score goals. They can't finish their chances. Look at Sporting KC. Another defeat for them on the road against the San Jose earthquake. And I mean, Sporting KC yet to win a game rock bottom in the western conference and when you look at their productivity numbers they are producing you will wonder what is happening you know look at when you go to the attack they are having 41 shots on target and they converted just two to goals so that means sporting cancers they are having a goal scoring problem they have a total shot block shot of 73 and 41 were on target only two had been finished and that means look at their conversion rate 2.7 percent conversion rate so poor when you come to their ball distribution sporting cancers are putting together 35 over 3500 passes in over eight games and 2900 have been successful that means they are averaging 51 percent of success rate when it comes to long passes so now what is happening to sporting cancer is a goal scoring problem so that means the goal scoring department that has daniel shalloway william magada 
in another players are not performing to their optimal standard and that should be a worry for Peter Vermeer. Sporting Kansas are rock bottom in the Western Conference, 3 points from 8 games, just 3 draws, no win this season. So that should be the question that people will be asking. Imagine a team putting together 446.3 passes per 90 minutes and they are not switching their chances. 41 shot on target over 8 games and only 2 have been converted. That means there is a goal scoring problem in Sporting Kansas. Alright, so let's go to City Park, the game between FC Cincinnati and St. Louis City. I mean, prior to this game, FC Cincinnati defense has been very conservative. When you look at them, they've not considered more than five goals in seven games. And I was in my opinion that at least they can get a point from St. Louis. But St. Louis coming from a back-to-back -back defeat, one at home, one on the road, now they are back at home to show to their home fans that this is still the same team that won five games on the bounce early this season. And they did just that. They were able to crack open FC Cincinnati's defense, pumping five goals on that defense. And that was so hilarious. And now, with that defeat for FC Cincinnati, now the dynamics of Eastern Conference table has changed. St. Louis so happy to snap their, their two game losing streak in that um, 5 1 trash. Just look at how those goals came around. Alright, so now let's go to FC Cincinnati's coach Pat Noonan post-match conference. Let's see his reaction towards uh, that defeat on the road against St. Louis City. Get a result. Um, yeah, there, you can go a lot of ways with this one, but it certainly didn't feel like a 5-1 game, but it was. So that's that's where we need to figure out. Um, you know, the areas that we went wrong. Um, I think they just were far superior in the boxes tonight. You know, I think like five shots and five goals is what at yeah. one point what I saw. So everything was going in. And then in the moments where we were able to get in and around goal, we weren't decisive and, you know, passing up on shots when I think we could have gotten our shots off or just not, not able to win a 1v1 duel. So um, that was certainly the difference in the game and the scoreline. But I, I, I thought there was a lot that uh, we did well outside of of those big details, certainly. All right, so at the City Stadium, the New York City Football Club got another three points at home with a 2-1 defeat of FC Nashville. And when we look at Keaton Park and Maxim Shannon's goal in that game, how they were able to secure three points for the New York City Football Club. That's so magnificent. Look at that set pieces. Look at how he struck it low and the goalkeeper has no answer. So now, even though um, Nashville superstar Hany Mukta, the current MVP, got one for Nashville, but it was too little, too late for it to salvage at least a point for Nashville Football Club. All right, so at the Stadio Saputo for CFD the Montreal, another home defeat for the Canadian-based team, and that compounded their woes in the Eastern Conference as, as they are feasting rock bottom on the conference and log. Yes, and they went down a 1-0 to Waironi DC United. In that year of the Montreal sport, they have Chinon for a Nigerian player. They have Victor Moyama, a Kenyan, but they couldn't contribute or they could not save their team from sinking to another defeat as they are rock bottom in the Eastern Conference, just three points from seven games. Alright, so let's go to El Trafico 2023 in Carson, California. I mean, LAFC fans, the black and gold, their voice over to the home ground of rivals in the galaxy. I'm going to pull up a video sent to me by some LAFC fans. Look at how the stadium dominated by LAFC fans, their voice louder 
than LA Galaxy fans because of you know the fact that some of the potters of LA Galaxy fans are still boycotting the game and they are not happy at what is happening. The season ticket holders are not happy and they are staging a boycott. And yes, the black and good fans, the LAFC fans, their voice is so loud and they dominated and their team repaid them for traveling to support them with a 3-2 win for the first time in Carson, California. Inside the 22 minutes, this Carlos Vela, he got that pass, you know, back to Cifuentes, recruited to Carlos Vela, and he bent it inside the net. A typical Carlos Vela goal to put LAFC in the lead in the 21 minutes of the first 45 minutes in this um, El Tropico. And it didn't take quite long before LA Galaxy struck back in this game. You're gonna see the goal of Tyler Bord. Now look at how Carlos Vela, you know, was able to score that goal. See Fuentes back to Carlos Vela. Now look at see Fuentes. Carlos Vela gave it back to him. He trying to side foot it past, but it bounced back to Carlos Vela, who finished perfectly to put LAFC in the lead here in Carson, California. In the 41 minute now, here come LA Galaxy. Tyler Ball shoot from a distance and he beat the goalkeeper to the goal. What a great goal from Tyler Ball. What a way to respond. I mean, the response so swift in the 41 minute. He has so much room to operate. Look at Tyler Ball and look at the, how the scanty um, dignity sports park, you know, the, the few, the, the home fans responding to that. Go. Look at how he got the pass. Was able to turn and twist. So much room to operate, and he shoots from that distance, and that be the goalkeeper. Another goal that will be in contention for the goal of the season. Even though Darren Asprilla's goal, excellent pass to kick, but this long shot from Tyler Ball in the equalizer against LAFC is so sumptuous and magnificent. Tyler Ball pegging LAFC back. Yes, in the 84th minute, Delgado trying to give LA Galaxy a little glimmer of hope with that simple tapping. Here come that quick counter from LA Galaxy and Delgado just tapping simply. But it was too little too late as LAFC held on to a 3-2 win here to become the only undefeated team after week 8 in the MLS. Alright Tom, still around the MLS show with Sam here on Africa Sport Network. Let's go to um, the beautiful goals scored in week 8. Now let's go to the goal of the week. We start with Darion Asprella. Darion Asprella's bicycle kick is number one. Look at how he executed that. Now enjoy the rest of the goals of the week. On this note, we come to the end of today's edition of Around the MLS Show with Sam here on Africa Sports Network. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on all my social media platforms. Have a blessed day.